Hello, uh, welcome to the Jenkins UI UX Hackfest. Today we are doing a, a demo about uh, Jenkins uh, redundant configuration and system read permission. So Tim Jacob, uh, one of the uh, uh, well, uh, uh, the leader of this effort and uh, the most active contributor, will be showing uh, uh, the demo and uh, he will also show how to contribute. So Tim, the floor is yours. All right. Well, let me just share my screen. Uh, cool, can you see that? Yes. All right, well, thanks everyone for coming. So I'm just going to show, um, well, I'll introduce you to the feature, um, show, tell you what's been done so far, and then I will take you through a bit of a demo. So there'll be a, a, a user demo to begin with about what the feature is, what's there, and then I'll take you through how to actually add this feature to more plugins and more core components. Um, so what it is, so the beginning of this was for the configurations code plugin, um, trying to uh, introduce what's known as a read-only UI so that users are able to um, so that users are able to see everything but not make changes. So it's very useful if you want um, your users to contribute to a, to a configuration of storage, a convert configuration of code stored centrally somewhere. It's, it's also useful if you want them to take full, full ownership of their build. Um, so not just what's going on in the build, but other factors that could have caused issues. So they can see system logs, um, they can see configuration on Jenkins and whether perhaps changing an option could help them. And they can also see um, what they would have to change in order to contribute it um, back or just give suggestions on the administrator. Um, another thing you can see is you can actually see who does have access to what in the Jenkins instance. So you, you'll be able to see the security configuration, which says that um, Joe is an administrator and he's the person to go and talk to, to get help with the issue that you're currently having. So what have we got included so far? Um, so initially it was released in 2.222, um, and just before the previous LTS went in with two initial pages, the configure system page, which is where the majority of the system configuration is, and also the, um, system configuration page. Um, so, so that's the one that is the table on there which has a whole bunch of configuration values on it. Um, between 2.222 and 2.238, we've added approximately um, eight more pages, uh, which has the majority of the core components. So the majority of ones that people need should all have been released as of Monday. Um, so plugin manager, cloud configuration was, where it was were re recently added. Um, we have support in one plugin, the configuration is code, um, with pull requests open to a couple more plugins currently. Um, and what else, one thing that this changed um, recently was, initially it was just going to be about the system configuration, because there was already um, ex the extended read permission to give job configuration. Um, but as part of this, we improved the code so that there'd be a read-only view um, for jobs rather than just the standard inputs. And we also extended um, this to agents so that users with the agent extended read permission are able to see agents, um, see, the, see the agent's configuration, see the agent's logs, um, pretty, pretty much everything available. Um, and that's just been released in the latest weekly, uh, 2.238. Um, so it is currently a beta feature, so it's not on by default, um, but we've, there's a meta plugin, which is called the extended read permission plugin, which will activate it if you install it. Okay, so I'm just going to get started with a demo of the feature, and then we'll go on to seeing um, how, how to do it. So... Can you see my um, managed Jenkins screen? Yes. 
All right, so this is just a Jenkins 2.238, which I just downloaded off the, um, off the Jenkins website. Uh, I've done nothing to it other than just hit configure. So if I go to configure global security, I will see that there's a, so there's a number of permissions here. This is using the matrix auth plugin. Um, but what we can't see is any of the extended read permissions. So you'd expect to see system read here, here and here for the extended read permissions. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to install the um, extended read permission plugin. So that should just take a, um, a few seconds. It's the very small plugin and that's done. So if I go to configure global security now, I will see that system read has appeared and I'll also see agent extended read and job extended read. So I've got a user, so I'm currently logged in as my admin user. I've also got another user called reader and I'm gonna grant reader system read um, job read, job extended read, and agent extended read. Um, so I'll just take, just give you a quick wee tour of what a system read user can see. So this is initially logged in. I've got two builds, one pipeline and um, probably one freestyle build, but we'll see. So this is a, this is viewing a job configuration form. Um, if you, I'll show you again in a second, um, but there's very little configured on this build. Let's see if there's anything else in the other one. Um, one change here is that there's a, it's a view configuration label rather than a configure just to try and indicate that it's not something that you can change. Um, okay, these don't have anything configured in them. That's okay. Um, let me go to manage Jenkins and then configure system. So one thing I wanted to highlight is that, so this is supposed to indicate to you that it's read only is done in a few ways. So one, where possible, um, form, form inputs have been removed and just changed to output plain text. So you see here, there's, there's no input field and it's just text. Um, and also we've been trying to explicitly indicate whether a field's set or not. Um, and in some cases we have preserved the input because there's, um, just technical issues really with this, there's some complicated JavaScript, which is used to show and hide some, some of the nested fields. And it's very dependent on there being an input there of a specific type. Um, so the ones that work have been disabled. Um, okay, these ones don't seem to work. Um, but in general, you'll, in general, you should see inputs either textual or disabled. And you'll see that the save and apply buttons are not here. So we've removed all of those. If I go back to the manage Jenkins page. So these are all of the um, views that are available to you. It's not all of them. So there's a, I'll go back to administer just for a second. So this is the total number. Um, but most of the important ones are there and some more of them are coming hopefully during Hackfest. Um, there's been a couple of pull requests already. Um, and the last bit is the agent's extended read. Um, so I've just configured an agent which doesn't have anything actually set up. But you can come in here and you can uh, click view configuration on the agent and see what's been set up. Um, and you see that these inputs here are actually disabled properly, so you can't click on them. Um, and you can go and view the agent's log. This agent's never connected, so there's not actually anything there. And you can see some of the monitoring information and status information. Um, so ho hopefully that will be useful. Um, that's 
pr pretty much a quick tour. Um, so you can see you can see plugin updates, and you can also this is one of the few actions which you can do as system read is you can check for plugin updates in general. Um, all actions have been disabled and it's read only, um, but you can't cause any issues with this button. It just it just it just updates the cache basically. Um, and you can see that there's a number of plugins that could do with an update, um, which may be through configuration, maybe through like a Docker image, or it may be that an admin comes in here once every week or two and will come in and update them depending on how you're set up. But you can come here and you can see what plugins are available um, and probably more importantly, what plugins are installed and what their version is. And you can see that I've installed a my personal version of, of the configurations code um, and just the number of plugins that are installed, which hopefully will be useful in certain situations. Um, I think that's pretty much all you're welcome to explore. Uh, last one is just security. So I can see, um, I'm not on the latest version of Matrix Auth, but um, so the latest version of Matrix Auth will not show any of these controls. Um, but in general, um, you can see who has access, which should hopefully be useful. Um, so now it's time to go over to the code side of it. The first thing I want to show is there's some, well, if I go back here, um, there's a, the, a blog post that was announced um, yesterday, I believe. So if you just want to have an introduction to read through, just go to the Jenkins IO website and it's called Read Only Jenkins Configuration. Um, and it's currently the latest blog. Um, so it's just going over what I've shown you, uh, gives you the permission names, some background, some screenshots, and how to use it. So if you want to refer back to um, how to get set up, you can refer here. And some example configuration as code, which will define a role for you and it has all of the read roles that you will need. Um, but what I came here to show you really is that there's a how-to guide that I've written um, that will hopefully help any developers trying to update either their plugins or the Jenkins core to support this. Um, so the way that most of these read-only views have been done is based on a property that's set um, at the page level um, of whether it's in read-only mode or not, just based on the user's permission. Um, then the form tags adapt, which I'll show you an example of that in the code. Um, so if I go to text, um, Xbox.jelly. Um, so we've got this possible read only field wrapper, um, which is for simple, fe simple fields that, um, so when it's read only mode, it outputs. Um, it will output either the value as a text entry or just not applicable. Otherwise, it will um, output the actual value um, that that would would be used if it's not read only. Um, so that's so that's used in a few places for simple fields. Um, but if you have more complicated rendering, then you won't be able to do that. Um, and also, this is only available from two point two 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 ish. Um, which means that if you're updating a plugin, you probably can't use this wrapper if you want to stay compatible. Um, you'll have to directly check um, whether it's in read-only mode or not. Um, but this is a good example of where to look. If, if you look at the form tags in Jenkins core, so you can find those in, uh, let me just collapse these. Um, so you can find these in core, source main resources lib form and so we've got um we've got um fields like number password radio radio block 
um, submit text box validate button. So these are examples of certain form tags that uh, are provided by the Jenkins core form library. And so most plugins use these. So a lot of plugins, so I believe 95 plus percent of plugins don't need to make any changes. Um, and out of the box, they will look read only. They may need some adaptions on top to hide buttons that don't make sense in a read only context. Um, but so, so that's the main um, setup really. Um, I've given examples in both Groovy and Jelly as there's Groovy based views, um, which have less examples normally. So that should hopefully help. Um, there's also a couple of examples of partial read only views. Um, so I won't go too much into detail on it. Um, uh, maybe I should do it. Uh, not quite there. Let's not worry about that. Um, so um, basically, there's a concept of um, there's a permission called Jenkins slash manage, which allows you to edit certain permissions, but not others. And if you combine the system read, um, there's a way to um, only set read only to certain fields. Um, the jelly tags allow you to nest, um, to basically it's, it's the closest parent that sets read only mode. So you can set read only mode at the top and then you can unset it in the child. Um, so if it's unlikely you'll come across that, but there's an example of how to do that. Um, and here's an example of many different types. Um, so what I'm going to show you, uh, one, so we're going to do this in a plugin and it will likely be relating to this section here, allowing access to a view. Um, views are quite often protected by permission checks um, at the jelly level and sometimes at the code level as well. So I think let's just get to it and you can use this as a guide to refer to. So I picked a plugin, uh, it's called the Docker plugin. Um, I've just checked out this repo. Um, I need to set it up so that I can run it from my IDE. So I use IntelliJ and I just set it up with a Maven run. And then I use the HPI run command line and the quick build profile. Um, and then to set a couple of settings here. I'll set a non-default port as I'm already running on port 8080. Um, I also set that so that it doesn't pop up and annoy me. Um, and the first thing to look at is the POM file. So this was released in 2.222. So I'm going to want to test it on a version that has that. Uh, it's currently using 2.60. So for testing purposes, I'm just going to update that to the latest version, um, but I won't check that in as this will be compatible um, in both directions. Um, the next thing that I need to do is when you're updating the version, you normally need to use a more recent version of the parent POM. Um, so I probably, probably won't check this in again, but I'll just use it so that it works for me locally. Um, and the last thing, well, first, the next thing here is let's just start it up and see what it looks like. Um, so basically, you're looking for anywhere where Jenkins.administer is in the code. Um, so this is um, and so this is in a get target method. So get target is basically a proxy that gets called um, in the request chain um, when you're requesting a page. Um, so there's the sort of hack, sort of intended behavior where you can um, intercept the proxy and add a permission for the whole um, path. Um, so this is, this is what this is doing. Um, we just start it up. It should be almost, sorry, it should be almost started. Oh, we're getting trilliard compilation problems.
Yeah, yeah it's yeah, likely to be a bigger change in there, but good luck. Well, but, okay. but that was that that particular plugin was extracted out about 2.205, 2.204. So yeah. you're, you're dependent on 2.222 right here, Tim. Uh, I went to 2.238 just so it's ah, like, even newer. Great. Just to show okay. the weekly. It's starting now. It was weird. I, st I started this up earlier and I didn't have that problem. But. There we go. We're up now. Uh, what port did I choose? Did I wait to? Okay, so yep, so this is the right Jenkins uh, pick that I'm running. So what we're doing here is we're going to make the Docker plugin available. Um, so if I go to configure global security, um, we're going to notice that I'm using the folder of authorization strategy. Um, which is actually going to show it. So let's just change that. Um, we go to the matrix based security admin administer. Um, so what we're going to see here is that we, again, we don't have system read, but this is the plugin that's based on an old core version that doesn't have system read available. Um, so what we need to do in this case is we need to add a dependency to the extended read permission plugin. And that has a shim um, that allows us to um, access to, I'll, sh I'll show you the code just so it makes sense. Um, and I'll just restart while I'm doing that. Um, so basically it tries to load the system read permission um, and if it can't load it, it falls back to the administer permission. Um, so on versions of Jenkins core that have system read, then you'll get system read and on versions that don't have it, it'll just be administer. Um, so we need, um, we need that installed in order to, um, to work with our core versions. So we found out that what we're looking for is a management link, which is what we found before. So a, Anything on the slash manage page, which has those tiles on it, um, will ex extend from a management link. Uh, and access to a management link is governed by what's called the get required permission method. And by default, that is Jenkins.administer. So we're going to need to override um, that to be system read permission uh, dot system read. And um, what we're also going to see is that in that search before, I found a get target method, um, which is looking for Jenkins to administer. So we just need to change that to be called get required permission. Um, that will fix that error. Check that for now. Cool. So I think that should probably be all we need. And I'm just going to, since all those methods were declared, um, I'm just going to hot swap that code into my running instance because um, I'm attached with a debugger. And while that's happening, I'll just prime this. Oh, you see there, 74 classes reloaded all green. So that means that the two code changes have been hot swapped in. So you can only do a hot swap if you're modifying 
code. You can't do it if you're adding new methods or fields um, or deleting methods. Um, but if you can do it in line, it can be make Jenkins development a lot quicker. Um, so I'm just going to do it system read. And this user here is going to get system read. He's also going to need overall read as it's not granted by default. Um, and that should be all. And system And you see here the Docker plugin has shown up now. If I click on it, I can view it. So that's quite unusual. Um, normally, this would be, normally this would require a change to be done in the view. Um, so let's go have a look at why that is. So this is the Docker management index.jelly. Um, and if we look here in that layout tag permission, we see that it's loading it from the um, from the management link here. So it's actually, it's actually just calling um, get required permission on this management link. Um, so this is the first plugin I've seen this in. So it's, it's nice we don't actually have to change it. It, it worried me a little bit when I first saw it, um, but it w seems to work fine. Um, and there we go. We've now added system read support to the Docker plugin. Um, so that's... Yeah. So Tim, I didn't, I didn't quite get why you didn't have to alter that doc, that class in the Java code that had the dot administer reference that you just showed. It, it, it was just because it was dot administer, it already had then grant was granted system read permission. Uh, which bit do you mean for the dot? So administer? the call to get required permission uh, that you just referenced. Yeah, that. Oh, oh, okay. I must have misread it. I, I thought it said system, thought it said administer, my mistake. No, it was originally super.get required permission, um, which I just added earlier so that I could hot swap it in. Um, and then I just changed it to be system read permission there. Um, yep. Any questions from the demo? Yeah, I was just surprised about the choice of the plugin because uh, yeah, Docker plugin is uh, likely one of the complex plugins and uh, in order to make it efficient, you would need uh, other plugins, for example, Cloud Stats plugin and uh, other is, which will also need to be accessible as system read. I, I did pick Cloud Stats plugin first, um, mm -hmm. but um, fortunately or unfortunately, some, someone else has sent a pull request to make it compatible yesterday. So mm -hmm. I decided this morning I needed to choose a new plugin. Yeah. And so I picked this one. Yeah, so do you plan to finish it uh, for all controls uh, in the plugin? Because it's also pretty big. What other controls are there? This is the one I saw, but I don't really know this plugin. Yes, yeah, so um uh, there is cloud configuration um also uh, there is uh, uh, agent uh, which will likely work out of the box uh, with agent permission oh yeah and yeah i'm just trying to remember what else was configurable in this plugin because i also haven't used it for a while Maybe I'm wrong, and uh, this plugin is actually not that big when it comes to Jelly files. So, yeah, it includes a lot of uh, pipeline documentation. So, yeah, it also includes various connectors and other things, um, but all of that should be available from uh, this web uh, interface. So there should be no additional uh, changes on the, the hood. Uh, but yeah, there is a lot of different connectors, strategies, etc. And in my case, uh, this plugin was uh, the main reason to move to Gcask on my old 
own instances because yeah, configuring it uh, was quite difficult. Yeah, I'll try to take a look. Um, mm -hmm. Cloud should work out of the box, although it doesn't seem to be finding it for some reason. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right now I'm uh, working on an uh, update of my configuration as code demo, and this demo includes a uh, Docker plugin. So assuming that you stitch your fix, I will be happy to pick it up from incrementals or from elsewhere. Um, and yeah, then we can uh, see it uh, on a fully configured uh, setup. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, just moving on from there. Um, so what's next is um, the Jenkins 12548 is epic. Um, we've got about a dozen or so feature requests that are open. Uh, so we've had another contributor pick up a couple of them during Hackfest. Um, and the rest of them are all open for anyone to pick up. And we'd love it if you would take a look at it. Um, and also we'd love feature requests or enhancement or bugs. Um, so just testing all of that was well welcome. Um, we're currently using this Epic or if you do it during Hackfest, you can just report it to the Hackfest GitHub repo and we'll help um, route those to the right place. Um, so we're current, so when this was initially implemented in just plugins, sorry, just Jenkins core um, and this will be a good time for any plugins that need support to be added to it. Um, the UI and user experiences, while, um, while it's functional, um, it could certainly be improved. And there's a couple of those issues that are related to that. But anyone who has some UI experience, uh, we'd be much appreciated if you'd be able to take a look at it. Um, we have a GitHub project which has a few pull requests open or merged. So we've got three open pull requests and we've got three merged that need releasing. Um, so if there's any maintainers out there um, who want to be able to release those, that would be helpful for us as well. But so CloudSats has actually been merged already, so that's quite useful. Um, yeah, and the role strategy, I guess, the ball is on my side. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, try to cut the release. Uh, there were some uh, issues in uh, recent role strategy versions, but so I don't think that uh, this change will make uh, it any worse. So I will take sure. a look. Uh, and yeah, just what I was saying before, create more feature requests and bugs so that we can get it over the line. How to contribute. So we're interested in people testing, um, we're interested in any feedback. Um, and so these, these slides will be shared afterwards and you'll be able to get to these links. Um, and the links are also available in the Hackfest document that Oleg shared in the Hackfest channel recently. And you can use them depending on whichever is easiest for you to find, um, or you should be able to find them on Jenkins.io quite easily. And it's just some more references. And that's everything from me. Do we have any questions? Yeah, so the approximate uh, timeline for this feature, uh, well, it's rather command. Uh, we have a new LCS baseline uh, landing uh, next month, and after that, we will have a LCS baseline in September. So I guess uh, our ideal goal is to have everything uh, delivered by September. So if you see a plugin which is uh, lacking support uh, for read-only permissions, or if you see a use case uh, where you could uh, make it better, feedback would be much appreciated so that we could uh, coordinate uh, this effort and uh, deliver a great user experience uh, for the next releases. Tim, is there any guidance you want to offer as I'm considering how we phrase the 2.235 release notes, the change log, so it's not, it won't have the full system read experience, but it does have some of the changes. Are there any, is there any guidance you want to give me there on how we should describe that, how we should introduce it? Um, so it's got, it's got all of the, it's got all system read except for cloud of what's been done so far. Oh. Okay. Um, and so it's missing, so it's missing some of the, the agent extended read, which is part of the read only Jenkins as a whole. So it's, but yeah, it's just cloud that's missing. 
Um, we managed to get everything except for the one one pull request done. Um, so yeah, system read beta is mostly complete. Um, so, so good. So then we want to encourage people to test the 2.235 release candidate and look at system read in that context. It's a viable place to do. They don't even have to go all the way to 2.38 to, to have a, a reasonable experience with system read. Yep. Good. So, yeah, probably I'll uh, grant uh, permission to talk uh, to participants. There was no questions um, in the uh, but uh, just in case somebody wants to ask something, please do so. Or if you have any feedback, it will be much appreciated. Okay. Uh, if not, yeah, thanks a lot, team, for the presentation. And uh, let's uh, try to facilitate some contributions around this story. So in the morning, we had a discussion about how we could uh, help contributors uh, and how we could uh, help them to navigate through the stories and project ideas we have published. Uh, so if you want uh, to ask something about contributing or if you want to just share your feedback, uh, please let us know in the chat or I stop the recording and we can discuss it now ahead of office hours, which are scheduled uh, in 20 minutes, but we can spend some time now as well. <laughs>